Hi folks, Jack Spirico here with episode 6 of the Modern Theist Podcast. If you listen to the first 5 episodes as they came out, you know there's been a hell of a hiatus between 5 and 6. And I'd love to tell you, like, we'll just start rolling again hard right now, but, uh, you know, Modern Deism as, as a uh, podcast and a blog is something I've had kind of on the side for a long time. And um, I do it because I believe that it's important. And I don't believe it's important because I believe it's going to transform the world or anything like that. I actually believe it's important because I believe there are people in their walks of spirituality that have these questions and want to have a place where they can hear about and discuss this type of stuff. So I've tried to do it, but you know I am a full time podcaster. Uh, I run a, a, a podcast that runs about two hours a day, five days a week. I have a small farm, so um, I, I'd like to get this thing rolling again. And honestly, I, I I've thought about it, and I think sitting down at my desk and doing them first thing in the morning instead of out with the ducks like I've done the first few podcasts or whatever is probably actually quicker and more productive and keeping them to around 15 minutes may make them doable once a week. Here's the bad news with that. Um, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So um, I'll be gone for two weeks. It's, It's probably not a good idea to restart something right before you leave, but there's some stuff, compelling stuff on my heart right now that I want to share And I've got some ideas for some new podcasts, and I certainly want to hear from those of you that listen uh, and have read the blog over the years with things that you want me to discuss in future episodes. But here's today's. Uh, We're going to discuss the the counter-argument to atheism today of of the simple and almost silver bullet-like argument that atheists feel that they have, which is God does not exist because there is no evidence for God and you cannot prove that God exists. You cannot, you know, just be, just because you see something and say, well, it had to get there somehow so God created is not evidence. The, the, there's no way that you can send a radio telescopic beam into space and bounce it off of heaven. There's no way that you can show me God under a microscope or a fingerprint of God. There is no scientific evidence for the existence of God. If we hold scientific evidence to the standard that we would hold it to, let's say, in a courtroom, right? Saying that this man is dead, therefore this other man must have killed him because he was in the general vicinity, is not scientific evidence. It's not forensic evidence. In fact, with the argument atheists are making against God, they'd say just because this man is dead doesn't mean somebody killed him. You have to actually have evidence that he was killed by another human first. For all we know, he was bitten by a snake or a spider, or he killed himself. And you'd have to show a scientific evidence that would make it plausible that something else occurred, that there even was another human within 10 miles of him when he died. And a lot of times people of faith get very offended by this, but I find that people tend to get offended when someone challenges them with a logical argument that they don't have a good counter-argument to. And this is certainly true in this, this, uh, this argument when it's, it's directed at somebody of an organized faith, or revealed religion as we call it, because what they want to do is rely on their book, whatever book it is, the, the, the Bible, the Torah, the Koran, etc., right? Well, you can't do that with an atheist, because the atheist says that's not evidence, which I think is actually a reasonable position for an atheist to take. Listen, if you, I'm not even discussing whether or not your version of God exists. Again, we're back to the dead guy laying on the ground. We're not even discussing which person killed that man. We're discussing right now, did another person kill him, or did he just fall over and die because he was 95 years old? And you have to give me evidence that there was another person involved before we even discuss the attributes of that, that other person. So you have to give me evidence of God before I will even accept that we need to even dis- discuss the nature of God. Because I don't even believe there is one. It's a very frustrating argument. And the problem with having that discussion with an atheist as a deist is you're immediately lumped in with the person that believes that God had somebody swallowed by a whale and live in there for a week or two before spitting him out. That that is that you that all see and that's the problem with atheism. The atheism has an arrogance that all people that believe in a god are of the same ilk, so to speak. Now I'm not putting down Christians and I'm not putting down Jews, but I do believe that it is much easier if the atheist would have it to have a logical discussion about the existence and nature of God with an atheist as a deist 
than it is with, let's say, a born-again, devout Christian trying to have that discussion with an atheist. Because the arguments that that born-again Christian are going to make have no relevance to the atheist whatsoever. And the atheist view of religion is specifically negative to religions like Christianity because they blame those religions for problems in the world, and they find many of the things that those people believe to be preposterous. Frankly, I share much of what they feel about those faiths with atheists, yet I still believe in God. So what is our legitimate counter-argument to God does not exist because you cannot show me evidence for God? I would say fair enough. Fair enough. That also does not disprove God. And it leaves us at somewhat of a stalemate, doesn't it? Because the the counter-argument by the atheist of you cannot disprove a negative is a valid counter-argument. It doesn't prove that they're right, but it is a. And if you don't accept that it's a valid counter argument, then you can't move forward in the discussion. And I'll explain what I mean. Let's say I said, you know what? There is a planet called Plebo. Plebo exists on the same orbit plane as the planet Earth. And the reason we can't see it is it's directly behind the sun at all times. And as we, you know, as we. Uh, orbit the sun, it orbits in, in perfect timing with us and constantly maintains this giant fireball eclipsing it on an identical orbital plane. And on that planet, everything's just like it is here. It's like a second universe. Okay, it's a preposterous claim, and I, I'm using it for that reason. But here's what I would say then disprove it. Now, until we have space flight capabilities, which we do, there would be no way to disprove that. So my, my point with this, to be fair to the atheist, is you can disprove a negative, but you cannot do so until such a time as technology exists sufficient for the challenges of doing so. But I want you to think about it from their angle for a minute, because it's how you understand another person's view. If I made that claim to you, and if we didn't, let's say it was, uh, I don't know, it was 1850 when I made that claim. And everybody's like, this is stupid. How would you even know that? Well, I just know. Well, you have to prove it. No, you have to prove it's not true. There's no way for you to prove that it's not true other than it doesn't make sense. Which is pretty much the stance on the existence of God. Now, if we're going to be fair with that challenge, then I would submit that atheists should be fair with the challenge that I'm going to extend today. If you want to say that there is no God, if there is no intelligence whatsoever behind the creation of all that is, it's all random happenstance and it all happened by accident. I could go along with you with that argument right up until there's a single microbe on planet Earth or a blade of grass or a cat or a dog or a snake or a fish or a human being, there's a life form. Once there's a life form, you have to have an explanation for life. Now, the atheist community, generally, not always, but generally is quite scientific, and the scientific community is pretty decent at giving a plausible definition whereby the universe could form, as we know it, without an intelligence. I don't agree with it, but it's reasonable and it's plausible. It can be explained with mathematics. And it is not something that you would say, I want you to create another universe and prove to me that it's possible. Right? That's not a... Let's not, we're back to the 1850s and there's another Earth called Plebo. Right? That's not a reasonable counter-argument. However, what is a reasonable counter-argument? And this is something atheists have no answer for. They are as ill-equipped to answer this question as the born-again Christian is to answer, where is the evidence for God other than your Bible? It is simply, then why can't you create life? Because what you're saying is that the entire universe formed, and this chunk of rock we call Earth was in this like Cinderella zone, or this Goldilocks zone, I'm sorry. And it was just the right distance from the sun... And it had a giant moon, and that was actually created by a planet we call Orpheus in prehistoric times, pre, pre, pre-Earth pre times, actually. And Orpheus collided with proto-Earth and spun the moon out of it. 
And had that not all happened, we wouldn't have this Goldilocks world with tides and a nitrogen oxygen at atmosphere and the right temperatures, and all that happened by accident. Okay, fine. Sure. Let's, that's with billions of galaxies, not billions of planets, billions of galaxies and gazillions of solar systems. If you can't concede to the atheist that it's a reasonable plausibility that that could occur by accident, you're not being fair in your debate, okay? However, at that point, all you have is basic raw materials. And somehow, by complete freak accident, some, you know, initial forms of life, some sort of a bacterium came to exist. And it began a process of unguided evolution that resulted in human beings that built skyscrapers, rocket ships, and submarines. That's not so plausible. But you could convince me of the plausibility of it if we could take all the raw materials that existed on the proto-Earth before life evolved, put it into a tank or a bubble or a dome somewhere, and stimulate it with electricity or the certain right amount of heat or anything that science is capable of doing. And there is no process that could occur on the surface of Earth that we cannot replicate. And you could produce for us one spontaneous life form. Just one. And you can't. So what I'm saying is the atheist has no evidence for the creation of life itself at the most basic form without an intelligence behind it. Some level of knowledge that we do not possess and that is the entity that we as deists refer to as God. Unlike many revealed religions, we don't believe God is sitting up there taking score. He doesn't have commandments for us. We have our own commandments for ourselves based on morality. And our understanding is our place of a living being with the ability to affect other living beings. But we don't believe God is some dude with a gray beard sitting on a, on a throne judging humanity. We don't believe that. We don't have any compelling reason whatsoever to believe that God, whatever God is, exists in any form that even looks remotely human or that it even looks like anything that we would think of as a being. We don't know. What we ascribe to the creator is that intelligence that guided and somehow put the spark of life onto our planet and likely elsewhere. But we have no evidence for life on other planets. Now, most atheists would actually say they believe that it's likely that there is life on other planets, just by a sheer numbers game. Most deists probably feel the same way. And I think what atheists don't understand is that's a lot how deists feel about God. It is not that we have this, we know there is a God, and if you don't believe it, you're a big doo-doo head. That's not how deists feel about God. We look at the preponderance of the evidence and the fact that science can't take raw material and create a yeast cell or a single-cell bacterium, let alone a tree from raw material. And we say, since that actually should not be that difficult... The greatest plausibility is that there is some unknown intelligence to the creator. That when we walk through the forest and we find a watch laying on the ground, we don't know what he looked like or where he came from or what he wants us to do with it, but we know there was a watchmaker. Because watches just don't show up. But at least we could make a watch. But when we can take a microscope and look and see an entire universe of microorganisms in existence, and the atheist explanation for that existence is that it spontaneously happened because of organic molecules existing in a state at the right temperature and timing with electrical stimulation, but yet you can't reproduce it, we say you have no evidence 
for the existence of life itself apart from something that we would call God. And if you want me to have the burden of proof that there is a God, I expect that you would have the burden of proof that life can spontaneously generate without a God. Now, usually atheists get very upset when you point this out, but they don't have a counter-argument, which is the same reason Christians get upset when atheists say that they don't have evidence for the existence of God. To me, the entire creation is evidence for the existence of a creator. But certainly the point I draw the line that science cannot explain with any plausibility whatsoever or reproducibility whatsoever, with evidence that would never stand in a court of law, is that life can exist apart from something that we would call God. Those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll try to get more coming to you in the coming months. My plan really is to get down to be doing about one of these a week. You can help me. You can help me. Uh, come by the blog, moderndeist.org, and leave comments in the, uh, the episode uh, fields and, and let me know the subjects you want me to discuss next. With that, this has been Jack Spirico with the Modern Deist Podcast.